All right, it's 12 noon. I hereby call this meeting to order. We'll proceed with the roll call. Coiner. Here. Duffy. Absent. Lemek. Mission on. Absent. Uh, McBride. No one online. No one. Okay, that's. I'm sorry. That's what I was trying to. Absent. Peterson. Absent. Shirt. Here. Spratt. Here. Thomas. Here. Trees. Here. Wood. Absent. We do not have a quorum. Mr. Chair. Good. Yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All righty, the red or green? With that completed, will everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? We'll have a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Oh, oh, we don't. No, there's only five. Oh, there is. Okay, true. So we can just go on with the. I mean, you just can't have any official acts, so it'll okay. be more of us just giving you updates and. We can we'll share have the no video. Official acts. All right. So we're up to no public either. Old business, none. New business, video presentation. So um, I'll give you a brief. What we've done is in the past we've done you know a park tour, um, and unfortunately with with the pandemic and everything going on that we weren't able to do that this year. So what we did was created a virtual basically video for you guys to get updated on a lot of the park development projects that you guys prioritized and, and things like that. So um, we'll play the video and then if you guys have any questions about anything after staff will be happy to answer. So here we go. Anderson, the Events, Education, and Aquatics Director here at Davenport Park and Recreation. Welcome. It's our 115th year of Vegeberry Parks, one of the largest and oldest parks here at the Davenport Park and Recreation Department. One of our wonderful new things here within our Learning Center is our Story Walk. It is a combination effort of the Parks and Recreation Department and the Davenport Libraries. It offers families the opportunity to walk through our learning center and read a book. It's broken down page by page and children will enjoy the story as they read it as throughout our park. Another addition in our park this year that is in our learning center is our greenhouse. It's brought to us by the Park Development Fund and it'll be put up in time for next season. As children and families start to learn through the plants that are raised in our greenhouse, they'll be able to see what happens from seed all the way to full plants. This greenhouse stands at almost nine feet tall. And it's 12 feet long and eight feet wide. And it'll be standing in our most northwest corner of our learning center. Come check it out next summer. Thank you for bringing it to us. Come venture with us down the hill as we go to our aquatic center and see more projects brought to us from the Park Development Fund, as well as you, our advisory board, and council. Thanks. Welcome back to the Fedgeberry Aquatic Center, where we have some exciting changes happening here, as well as at the Annie Wittenmeyer Complex, our family changing rooms. Unlike before, where there was only the male and female changing rooms, we're offering these family changing rooms. And what used to be our concession stand will now be those family changing rooms offering two for families. So if a mother and son come or say a husband and wife come and they need a little extra assistance in getting ready, they'll be able to do that now versus before. It's a new change that our families have been asking for and we're able to deliver this year thanks to our Park Development Fund. Another additional assistance that we'll be adding this year over at our Annie Wittenmeyer Complex is our sail cabanas. 
Unlike at Fedgeberry where we have our hard top shelters, we're going to be adding sail cabanas. These party areas will be available during our open swim for rentals. It's a great new addition that we're looking forward to having. And we'll be adding also at Annie Wittenmeyer Complex new covers to our sunshades because, hey, they're just getting old and we kind of need new ones. We look forward to these new changes at our aquatic centers and we look forward to having everyone come out for new swim season next year. Thank you very much to our Park Advisory Board and Council for making these changes happen and we look forward to seeing you. Welcome to Roosevelt Community Center, home to many community groups and activities. Today I'd like to highlight some of the projects we have going on here at Roosevelt that will enhance the appearance and functionality of our building. Behind me, we have our newly laid sidewalks that replaced some very old and cracked sidewalks, so it's better for the safety of the individuals using our center. Another improvement is we've been fortunate to receive funding through CIP for new windows in the building. This includes windows, blinds, and screen, and it has been done throughout the entire building. We've been able to make some improvements indoors as well. Due to the age of the building, our staircase needed some repairs. So we were able to retread them to make them safer for our occupants. Other projects we've been able to complete inside, thanks to park development funds, include changing all lighting to LEDs and renovating the main office. Other projects that we'll be completing using park development funds include painting the corridors in the entire building and replacing the flooring on the first floor. Thank you, Laura, for taking us on a tour of all of the improvements we've been able to make here at the Roosevelt Community Center. And thank you, Council and Park Advisory Board, for your support in making this possible. Hi, welcome to the River's Edge. We're behind the skate counter here where we're happy to provide all brand new rental skates as funded through a Park Advisory Board project. This allowed us to replace a very aging inventory of both figure skates and hockey, as well as allowing us to expand our rental offerings by about 15%. Continuing our virtual tour of the River's Edge takes us to the ice arena. Removing our ice surface for regular maintenance this year allowed us to further embrace the new city branding by installing the new logo at Center Ice. A big thank you to both our Park Advisory Board and City Council members for funding the replacement of our ice resurfacer here at the River's Edge. A new resurfacer that's battery powered allows us to lower expenses and ice maintenance costs as well as providing a safer environment for our participants. Another project provided by our Park Advisory Board is a partial renovation to the River's Edge restrooms. It's allowing us to improve the aesthetics of the rooms as well as update infrastructure for years to come. Welcome to Davenport Junior Theater, America's second oldest children's theater. Since 1951, we've been helping kids create a brave, bold tomorrow. And in all that time, a challenge like the current pandemic has never occurred before. Hi, I'm Daniel Sheridan, Performing Arts Supervisor here at the Junior Theater Facility. I oversee our theater and dance classes, rentals, day-to-day -day operations, and facility projects. When COVID-19 struck, we wasted no time pivoting into a brave new world finding innovative ways to serve kids. Earlier this year, we were proudly in the middle of our winter sessions. With over 500 enrollments in theater and dance, a very busy spring break camp happening, and a production of Robin Hood in rehearsals, we were rocking. Then, on March 16th, all programs ceased suddenly due to COVID-19. Our first response was to create something free, something that kids could access right away. And that's why we launched our all new learning channel. Housed on our website that's funded by our nonprofit partner, Junior Theater Inc., this channel originally started as just a few videos, but it now features over 70 videos, theater and dance lessons, performances, behind the scenes tours, puzzles, and more. 
We even created a special Showtime Pal learning series where Showtime Pal shares lessons about theater and dance, as well as reads stories for little ones. And it's all free. Thanks to a $1,500 contribution from Junior Theater Inc., we were able to create and design interactive learning packets that were mailed out to over 1,000 of our students, which linked them back to our learning channel for games and activities. These dance and theater packets provided our students a chance to have some fun in the arts. Coming back to our learning channel every week for new lessons and activities, we even had some kids create their very own family dance team. Next, in order to bring kids back in the classroom, we outfitted, designed, and prepared four virtual teaching stations. Our teaching stations house multiple cameras, microphones, and an audio streaming capacity that is top notch. Our partners at Junior Theater Inc. continue to pay for our advanced packages with Zoom, allowing us exciting and dynamic features to serve kids in the virtual space. This summer, we had over 500 enrollments in virtual classes. With kids signing up from all over the Quad Cities region and as far away as DeWitt, Dubuque, Cedar Rapids, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Ohio, California, New Jersey, and Oregon. But it's not only programming we've been working on. We've also been doing a lot of big projects around our facility, too. Now, typically, our costume shop is non-stop busy. In a given year with over 100 classes, six camps, and three main stage productions that all require a costume for the kids, in addition to our dance costume alterations, our costume shop never stops. Now, the current lull of costumed programs has allowed us to dive deep into many projects. And here are just a few. First off, our hat room has been sorted into stations by types and styles. We're even now using vertical spaces for special hats and wigs to preserve their use long term. Though it may seem mundane, we've made over 700 substantial repairs to costumes we have here in stock. This will allow us to utilize them for years to come. We've also had the time to sort, label, and arrange almost every bin and drawer and nook and cranny. We were even able to purge some old costumes or items that we no longer needed to keep. And early in the pandemic, we donated our sealed scrubs we had in stock to the hospital here nearby at Genesis East. We've also been here busy outside the facility as well. Painting outside not only improves things aesthetically, but it also invests in the life of the historic Annie Wittenmeyer complex, which dates back to the Civil War. Fresh paint helps protect the wood from the winter elements, preserving our home. A special thanks to our youth and AmeriCorps members who played a large role in this project over the summer. And here's a quick peek at just a couple more projects we've been up to. Restocking, designing, and preparing new space for our DJT Dance Shoe Exchange program. Sorting down and reorganizing our props house, removing a lot of clutter and getting ready to return to in-person programs. And preparing for our upcoming fall virtual main stage production. Also, we proudly hosted the Davenport Parks and Recreation Summer Camp here on site at Junior Theater. We recently teamed up with our adaptive and inclusive programs to bring the country hoedown dance to clients virtually, serving those in our community with disabilities. And of course, you will see us at the upcoming Halloween drive through event at the Fedgeberry Learning Center, the not-so-spooky Halloween. Another new project that I'm really excited about coming out this fall is our all-new Junior Theater podcast. The podcast is going to give us a chance to connect with alumni from around the world, current students and staff, and take a deep dive into some projects we've been doing over the years. Finally, after receiving notice from our users in a survey, we learned that 62% of our users would like to resume in-person programming. We're proud to say that we've put our heads together and we've come up with a way to safely provide in-person programs here at Junior Theater that follow CDC and local safety guidelines. With smaller class sizes and utilizing our largest spaces, in mid-October, Junior Theater will offer a limited lineup of in-person theater and dance classes. The theater itself will be used for theater classes, and our main dance studio will be used for dance classes. 
All our safety procedures can be found on our website as we seek to ensure the safety of staff and students. Of course, we will continue to offer our virtual lineup of classes in mid-October as well, so be sure to check those out. So thanks for joining me here at Davenport Junior Theater, and whether in the virtual world or in person, we can't wait to see you again. We miss you, and we'll see you at Junior Theater soon. Do we have any questions on projects or anything in the videos or anything not in the video? Um, over at Annie Witt there, what, whatever happened to that main building that I know we uh, didn't fund the kitchen or whatever it was, but was, I mean, anything going on over there? Um, there's money in the outline CIP for that potential down the road. There's been some private investors interested in that space. So right now, I think it's sort of sitting in a limbo, so to speak, as far as prioritization as to the future. So uh, nothing immediately planned. Is there anything that needs to be done so that, you know, like, the roof or something so the weather doesn't get into it or it doesn't fall in disrepair i mean are we keeping uh, hopefully we're keeping up on little things huh? yeah that's the role of the facilities division out of public works they maintain that actual structure and as far as i know there's no roofing issues or anything that they um are needing to address so I think most of the stuff was just interior remodeling to meet our programming needs if we were to go in there. I think there were neat videos. Is there any way to put, or do you feel it would be worthwhile to put it like on Facebook or uh, the next door app? Share them with people. I, I thought they were great. Yeah, we can certainly put them up, probably you have to break them up a little bit just because they're large files um, to get them out on the social media platforms. But uh, yeah, we can definitely work with our communication team on that. Jerry, did you have a question? This is what we were doing with that facility over there. So that's good. Uh, other than that, uh, what I've seen here is, my gosh, have you guys been busy? Great job. I, w I would note there's other park development projects. Obviously, we, we've replaced two playgrounds. Um, well, we've replaced one, and another one is out to bid, the Tyler playground. Those were both funded through park development in the last two years, uh, Tyler as well as Jungie. Um, the dog park renovations, you guys, uh, the Dola at South Marquette is ongoing, and we'll hope to have that reopen this spring. Um, any other projects I'm leaving out, Betsy? Oh, right, Duck Creek Lodge updates. Um, we're going to do some interior work and, and just general updating of the lodge at Duck Creek. Um, the movie theater package has been purchased. That's in. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to roll that out um, with the pandemic at this point. The same holds true with the Cosmic Golf. Um, we're hoping that we can, because those are highly social events um, and, and uses that once the, uh, we return to some normalcy, we can get those programs up and running, hopefully this spring. Um, but uh, yeah, staff's been super busy during this time and, and getting on all these projects. So um, we will start this whole process all over again. Um, the budget season is officially kicked off for FY22 from a staff standpoint. Um, and then so in, in the January meeting is when we typically bring you the next round of part development projects for you guys to review and prioritize. So look for those at the January meeting. All right, now we can move on to the highly anticipated director's verbal report. <laughs> well, I, I just said a whole lot. Um, but I, a couple, a few other things. Um, today, after this meeting, if you guys are 
wanting to get outside on this beautiful day. Um, we are up at Fedjaberry uh, installing, or excuse me, Vandeveer. Yes, Vandeveer today installing the Christmas lights so we can always use assistance if you have time. Thursday, we will be at Fedjaberry again. If you remember last year, we unveiled the um, interactive light display at Fedjaberry. That was a huge hit. We'll be doing that again this year. So um, opportunity for anybody who wants to come help and volunteer to get out and help our crews uh, today, this afternoon till about four o'clock and then uh, morning opportunity and afternoon opportunity on Thursday at Fedjaberry. So just wanted to bring those up. Um, I mentioned we're in full budget cycle right now. We've uh, completed and turned in our operating budget request. It's, it's been pretty much a, a um, no increase type of year or message with, with the city finances. So it's a status quo budget from an operating standpoint. Um, the CIP request, like I mentioned, we'll be doing the PAB or the, the park development fund um, here in January. Um, the River West planning project. I know some of you have participated in that. That concluded um, with its fourth meeting last week. And I think overall, and I, I can leave Mike or Jerry to speak to this if they have any comments. Um, but I, I think it was a good process, a good uh, group of different viewpoints on, on from Park Advisory Board to the Riverfront Improvement Commission members to the Corps of Engineers to Nahant Marsh to several aldermen being involved in the process. Um, so a lot of diverse input and opinions and, and I think we got some good strategies that have come out of that. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the final document looks like. We'll likely have that for you guys to review and, and act on at the uh, December meeting. Um, so look forward to having that come out. Um, and then the master plan, the parks master plan, we continue to plug along on that. We've, we've pretty much neared the completion of the first phase of that, which is the inventory of existing facilities and programs, as well as the demographic data analysis and benchmarking. Um, the next phase will be the public import, input portion which will be unique um, because typically when you do a planning process like this, the public input is done through a series of stakeholder meetings and, and public meetings, and, and we're not gonna quite be able to do it that way with, with the pandemic. Um, but we have a pretty good tool called Social Pinpoint that is gonna be the main um, way we seek input. So you'll start to see a lot of um, promotion of that here in the upcoming weeks through our, our social media channels and emails and ward meetings and every other way we can get just word out to the public on how they can participate in that process. So that'll be the next phase here. And I hope to have that sort of kick off here uh, before the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and it'll run through the new year and into this probably early spring. It's a pretty lengthy process for that portion of the, for the planning process. And then lastly, um, the Hempel paintings. If you remember, um, we were trying to engage the Figgy a while back to put those on display or to create some postcards as sort of a fundraising mechanism. And, and that didn't really go anywhere. We've had some talks, but it didn't go anywhere. So um, we, engage the library special collections uh, program as a place to potentially house these paintings for um, public display as well as um, being able to, they also offer um, prints. They can do prints of the paintings that then we can in turn um, use to fundraise. So uh, more to come on that, but I just wanted to bring that up in case you guys had any questions. Um, once we, if we go that route, once it's, they're in the special collection um, to the library, that, that's sort of where they stay, um, even though we'll retain um, ownership, obviously, but um, they will stay in the special collections at the, the library. So if you have any thoughts, questions about that, let me know. 
That's all I have. The, uh, it might be off the subject, but the disc golf course at Goose Creek, I think, is really impressive. I hope that really catches on. Uh, Goose Creek's kind of a, it's a neat park that nobody really knows much about. Um, is there any chance to get like a trial basket or two in some of the other parks? Well, not now, but come spring without putting in a whole course, maybe just one or two to see what people think. Yeah, I think that's something we can look at. Um, I'm not aware. Yeah, we'll look into that. Okay. I mean, not a whole course, or just like a one or two, you know, people could try it and see if they like it. But I think there seems to be people using it, so that's great. Okay. Verbal, uh, the written staff report, do you have that in front of you? If there's no questions, I would assume everybody's read, read, read through it. And now we would be down to our riverfront. I do have a question. This is Beverly. Um, with the hanging and how things are the lights and things like that, is that only till 4 p.m.? Because I'm not off work until 5. And is that only going on this week, or is there another time that we're going to be hanging? I'm sorry I've been out of the loop. I've been, you know, uh, dealing with the COVID and things like that. So um, I apologize, but um, i like to help in any way with the lights. Um, and I was just wondering if there was any other time other than during the week, or will there be another opportunity in the future and like in the next week or so. Hey, Beverly, this is Chad. Hey, we very much appreciate you wanting to help. Um, unfortunately, the, our staff time, our, our parks ops team, they're only on until weekdays until four. So we hadn't really planned any after hours sort of opportunities. If something comes up, we'll certainly make you aware. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just, we're doing it when we have our staff available to help volunteers. Okay, thank you very much. If I find someone to uh, take my place, I definitely will be there to help. <laughs> okay, thank you. Then we'll move to the Riverfront Improvement Commission report with our newly minted <laughs> reporter. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the bulk of the meeting that I attended was Kyle Carter of the Downtown Partnership um, presenting their newly completed master plan. Um, it is available uh, at downtowndavenport.org if you're interested in reading more. But some of the things that he highlighted were just the vision, um, which the things I wrote down were playful, connected, protected, livable, innovative, inclusive, and celebrated. Um, there was a considerable amount of talk about um, with the Y moving um, and that property becoming available as well as Lafayette Park. They're kind of uh, key points that he touched on um, developing these, I wrote in quotes, that Lafayette Park is painfully underutilized. Um, so there's some vision there about making that park um, more than green space and a playground, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, again, that presentation is available online for anyone who's interested. Um, they also talked about um, the progress for the Canadian Pacific crossings and the raised rec trail. I haven't had a chance to get down there. I don't know if Chatter has anything to add on that, but uh, I'm excited that it's nearing completion. We can use that area again. Yeah, I can give you a little bit of an update. Um, yeah, the majority of the crossings are, are nearing completion. They're hot and heavy with the gains crossing right now. And if you've tried to get into River's Edge, it's a total nightmare because um, we have a temporary entrance and it's an elevated gravel hill one way in, one way out. So that's that's caused us some concern, and especially on busy nights when we have uh, hockey and the turf going. Um, but hopefully, I, I believe they were supposed to, at least on River Drive, get the concrete going to complete that sewer portion of the road. And then gains, I think they're pretty close to being done. Hopefully within the next week, um, that'll be reopened. Um, the River Heritage entrance they're also working on, um, that looks to be pretty close to done as well. Um, and then I, I don't, I haven't really looked further down the road, uh, but I know the goal was to get all these done before winter. Um, 
So um, hopefully they're on target, uh, but we can get a more detailed update if that's something you guys want. I can ask uh, Brian Chat, the city engineer, uh, for more information. Thank you very much. All right, the next item is advisory time. Do we have any advice? <laughs> uh, Anybody? Okay. Yeah, me. Uh oh, I knew there had to be. <laughs> um, what are we doing as the golf courses right now? <laughs> I know he's been. You bet. Hi, I'm Troy. I'm the golf manager. No problem. I enjoy your question, sir. More specific, or you just want me to give you a little overview? Okay. We did. Um, um, we did uh, ma manage um, through some uh, um, capital improvement money through the park through the golf improvement fund which we've been rearranging every time a project comes in under budget, we rearrange the next one to maximize it to, uh, to use up the funds. So um, uh, this fall, we are kicking off, we are kicking off uh, the um, remainder of the four T's and E mice. Um, a while back, we took a tour. Some of you took a tour on the four T's that we did. And that was just the back nine holes to get them aligned. And we were gonna pick up on the front nine when we when when some budget money was available, it turns out it was available. So we uh, we're finishing the front nine this fall yet. So they'll be built this fall, but they'll be uh, seated in for next season. Um, we are um, we just completed um, a, a pretty substantial renovation at Duck Creek, where we uh, um, where we uh, uh, realigned hole number three out of the flood. You've heard about the plan I had about out of the flood holes. So we made new tees at number two that are out of the flood. We built a new number three green that's out of the flood. And number four, you still play to the original green, but where the tees are, you play uh, over the flood. And we had a little bit of a flood a couple weeks ago when we had, uh, we had the six inch rain um, uh, um, over, that one, over, that one, over that one last couple of days. It wasn't a, ma a major flash flood, but it did flood up enough to see that we benefited already. From that, and that's all growing in, um, and as we speak, and it'll all be open next spring. Um, and then some of that abandoned land at Duck Creek, that was in that floodplain that I talked about. Uh, the city has a uh, um, has a, uh, a a grant funded project to turn it into wetlands. So they're going to come in and uh, shape it up, and uh, actually create some water features in there that are that are just off off of off of the uh, off of the golf course turf. Um, if I go back to EMIs for a second, we're also going to do another chunk of bunkers. Um, probably about 15 to 20 more bunkers this fall. And then, um, and then right now we're, uh, we're looking at arranging a little bit of renovation to the bathroom buildings, um, that are out on the course, the two, the, there's a, there's identical bathroom buildings out on the course of EMIs and at Duck Creek, we're trying to. Um, kind of scrunch up some uh, the, some of, some of the leftover CIP money to fix them up. Um, but overall, I mean, it's been uh, uh, we're also doing a few more teas at EMI or at Duck Creek um, as we get going. And uh, right now um, at Duck Creek, the irrigation part of that um, part of that renovation is being done. Those holes that I, t I told you were realigned are now being irrigated. So there's guys running some pipe and things just just to. Uh, just to entertain the new renovated areas, not a not any other type of improvement. So um, it's been really busy. Even today, it was really busy with the sunshine and so so warm warm as it was. Um, golf is um, has has a, had a October cut off a little early. You know, we had some bad weather in the end of October, but overall, October was still really good because the front half of it was so good. And like today, we're getting really busy already with the good weather. Hopefully, we'll have a, one more good weekend in here. Yep, and the practice ranges. Yes, we uh, you know we 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 practiced uh, after we got the golf courses open. We pushed some of it out of sight. Well, maybe not completely out of sight, but we pushed it out of our way until uh, we get uh, winter time uh, time to get it removed. And, and uh, 
there's still substantially enough that we're looking at um, uh, possibly hiring a crew to help us help us get it out. But uh, um, we haven't had a lot of time to mess with it since we pushed it out of the way because of it. The, the courses have been really busy and doing really well. Why would we have to hire outside? Um, I, I discussed this once before. I think you and I discussed it, Chad, a little bit that we only have, what, one crew that, that it, that's in the forestry area? I mean, this is something the city has to look at, I think. Yeah, so the forestry department or divisions under public works, and I believe they only have two full-time employees and maybe two part-time yeah. employees. So um, that's why you still see some piles in the park areas. So we, we've cleaned up where we can and we've pushed them. We don't internally within our department have the right. chippers or the, the means to actually get those branches chipped up and, and out. So forestry is still, I mean, they were prioritized to take care of residential areas first in the community after I mean, the I mean, it was but, pretty right. hard with all of what was going on this summer, yeah. you know, with yeah. all of that. But I still think that they need to have a bigger forestry program. I mean, that would not only help the city, but it would help the parks as well because there'd just be more people doing it. And, and maybe we would be able to keep the trees trimmed and doing all the things that we should be yeah. doing. And in a typical year, and we did this a little bit, when we sort of get a lull in the grass mowing, we've lent some of our seasonal staff to forestry to come in and yeah. when they hit parks and stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's reflected from the direction of the need for, you know, a more probably robust forestry operation. Um, down on the, over at Duck Creek, down on number three, uh, and that's a floodplain area, right? Yes. How big of a floodplain area is it? How deep does the water get down there? I've never seen it really super wet down there, but maybe I might be wrong. Well, well this year in particular, we didn't have a, a flood over out of the banks. Um, so it was uh, um, really ironic that the last couple of years, or I've tracked them since I've been here, I think there's been 14 or 15 and uh, usually a couple of years. So uh, on number three in particular, if you ask about number three, it cuts across in front of the green. It doesn't get necessarily on the green, but it cuts off the whole fairway in front. Yeah, the, the green's elevated. I yeah, know. and if you go, if you were walking that fairway, you would see where all the repairs every year, we have to shut, we have to rope off half the fairway. For, My point is, is mm -hmm. why, yes. why couldn't we berm that along that creek area? If it's not, if it's not really super, Amount. Of course, I, I've seen where Duck Creek it goes overboard a lot. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I found during this renovation that I did, um, I've had a, a lot of, I had a, lot, a tough time getting anything to be raised above the floodplain. So that's why I went the way of just going for higher ground that we already had mm -hmm. because there's a lot of regulation in um, uh, bringing up any of the floodplain. Yeah. And then if you do have the, the berm like you talked about, you still got to let the water out of the so hopefully we don't get it in well it's still raining all the rest of the world is coming down into the end so it fills up like a bathtub but your drainage you should don't. take care of that mm -hmm. though shouldn't it right but when the creek's up nothing drains so it's flooded anyway okay. yeah. so so even when my um even when the tiles are down there the water doesn't go off till the creek goes down because there's nowhere for the water okay, to i run. understand okay um but it's it but it's uh um, i think what you'll find that we did this year is going to help in the revenues for years now because we won't have that shut down from the flash flood that we had that we've had uh, where we were shut down weeks at a time on the front nine yeah. because of the because of the sogginess and everything and now the where the golf course is built now is the same condition as the rest of the golf course so when it's good enough to play on number one it should be good enough to play on number three instead of it being pretty pretty closed off for a while where are we at with the buildings as far as your equipment the building, you know, we were we were we were uh, um, awarded the fifty thousand for uh, for the additional storage. We're bidding that out this winter, and we also have a big building uh, a bid out through the public works for the EMICE maintenance building. So we're uh, in in we're going to be gaining a lot of storage space um, when when those two things come through. So we're we're very blessed. We're very blessed and looking forward to that. Good. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Very good. There is uh, one thing out at Emise, I know that somehow or another the red flag on the 100-yard 100, 100 
pin out there is missing. I don't know where it's at, but it's gone. Okay. On, that's on the driving range probably, yeah, right? Yeah, on the practice the range, range, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, they, they come up missing sometimes and they get blown off or who knows. Yeah. But on, and on the trees, you know, we're in the middle of the, like we, we do have to depend on the forestry to come through and we're like in the middle of the customer base and, you know, your questions and forestry saying that, you know, we got to do the city first. And I totally understand. So that's why we're just looking at, you know, um, getting getting some of our areas that we pushed aside cleaned up for the, for our customers. So we're hoping to do, we're hoping to do that. And uh, um, that's, that's why I mentioned that. I was thinking about taking my chainsaw out there and kind of cutting that up a little bit and then leaving it lay the guys that pick it up, but I figured I better not do that. Yeah. Well, thank you for the questions. Okay. Thank you. I, I would go on the record, unlike Mr. Coiner, I, I don't understand the need for bunkers at all, let alone more of them. So <laughs> I, I could do without sand traps forever. All right, thank you. Well, we're down to adjournment. If there's no other business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd like to say one thing before the conversation. Okay. Hi, Adrian here. <laughs> I'm wondering if there is an update on the progress of both Veterans Memorial Park and as well as Heritage. Hey, Adriana, this is Chad. Um, no update really on River Heritage. The funding for the next phase is several years out in the CIP. We do have funding to um, in FY22 in the CIP to uh, do a portion of phase two at VETS. Uh, which will likely be the, the scenic overlook portion and then um, the trails area that we had gone out for a REAP grant. Um, council will prioritize CIP funding in January, so we'll know more if that project moves along. And if so, the funding will be available July 1, um, and we'd start to look to probably bid that out um, so we could hit the ground running sometime in July. And which park is that for? That was for Veterans Memorial Park. Okay, was that REAP grant approved? No, if you, the REAP grant was applied for not this past cycle, the cycle before, and it did not make the cut. We did not get the funding. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have anything else? Yeah, I just want to, I just want to mention to you that bunkers are for backstops. They're like a backstop. <laughs> and, they, and, they're, and they're placed on golf courses for people that hit it maybe too far in certain areas, and they use it as a backstop, not as a difficulty. <laughs> it's difficulty. It shouldn't be in there, but they are a backstop. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate <Yeah>. it. <laughs> okay. I would entertain a motion. I move we adjourn. There we go. A second. A second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 And that's it. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Next meeting, December 1st, 12 p.m. at City Hall. Park board staff, park staff will provide refreshments. We are adjourned.